skip intro. That is incorrect, Netflix. Your weekend pass is canceled. <laughs> Carry on. Hey, Lightweights. Today, I'll be reacting to Band of Brothers Episode 2, Day of Days. I am very, very excited to continue watching this because I absolutely loved the first episode. But before I actually get into it, I would just like to take a moment to thank you all because episode one was doing really, really, really well. And then HBO decided to block it. Contraband. So when that happens, it's very frustrating on the creator side of things because if the block gets lifted, it really hurts the YouTube algorithm afterwards and it pretty much kills the video. So I was really worried about that. Um, and I put a little call to action out there and ask you guys if you would a either be willing to rewatch the video or b share it with people so it could get back on track uh with the traction that it had before it was blocked and you all delivered and i just wanted to thank you for that i really really appreciate it uh it's not doing as well as it was but it's doing much better than it would have otherwise and i really really appreciate you guys supporting the channel in that way and coming together and helping me out with that because it was truly remarkable. And the amount of hysterical comments that I had just cracking me up. Sobel comments, inside jokes based off of the episode, just so good. I wish I could share them all with you now. They're freaking hysterical. I was dying. It would it made it so much better because when I when I tell you I was very angry, I was very frustrated, I was struggling emotionally, and reading through those comments just completely turned my mentality and my way of thinking around and i just really appreciate it it was it was wonderful so thank you all so much it was like you came together as like your own little band of brothers this community so far has been absolutely amazing i'm pretty sure the kindest most welcoming community i've ever experienced on my time in youtube obviously i'm newer in the reaction space but i've been around on the gaming side of things for a long time and there are great communities over there as well but this band of brothers community has been nothing but a, like absolutely amazing so maybe i'll share a couple of those funny comments on a community tab but if you want to go to the first video and read through some of those uh that just they're just freaking hysterical they're hysterical so uh thank you so much to everybody who lifted my spirits in that way i really appreciate it the last thing i'd like to say thank you for let me get my hair out of the way here I don't know who sent this to me, so I just want to say thank you. Um, this must have been overnighted. That's the only thing I can think of to my PO box, Kurahi, three miles up, three miles down. But I don't know, who, <laughs> I don't know who it's from. But the speed with which I received it after my video posted was just the only thing I can think is that it was overnighted. So I just wanted to thank you, whoever it was. It came from Etsy, so the re return label only said at like the the seller's information and there's no note on the inside other than the typical information that you get from an Etsy seller. So thank you so much for this gift. <laughs> I love it. I'm so excited to have this. So thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it. I'm so excited to be reacting to these and watching these with you guys and I really hope that I do this series justice. So thank you for joining me on this journey and I think that's everything. So if you are new here or if you watched episode one but you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. Definitely hit that bell button when you do so you get a notification when I post future videos. All right, you guys, here we go. Skip intro. That is incorrect, Netflix. Your weekend pass is canceled. <laughs> Imagine my best David Schwimmer voice. We saw that last video, last episode. I'm gonna have to watch for all these scenes now. <laughs> I guess I didn't realize last episode that these were scenes from the actual show. I love that transition. Standing in the door, I could see the lights on the drop zone way in the, ahead of us. So when the plane started to get hit, and suddenly I, the pilot gives me the green light, I'm out the door immediately. Got such an opening blast, it broke this chin strap that we had on this helmet liner, and, and uh, that's when I lost this famous leg bag. In any direction you went, there would be enemy. You knew it. 
and uh, that was all part of uh, what you accepted. How do you prepare yourself mentally? Each man must prepare himself mentally to, uh, to make that jump. And uh, you, oh, that's what you've got to think about. You know, whether, and we lost a lot of people that night. But uh, you try to put it all on your mind. The first guy, the first guy had an easy company sign in the, like, in the background. That was really cool. And that first guy also mentioned he's got to be, like, someone that's higher up because he mentioned, like, I got my guys, I told my guys to stand up when I saw the red light. So he's got to be somebody semi-high in the ranks, at least. I can't imagine the anxiety that you must be feeling at a moment like this. He seems like he's going to be a good leader, too. Giving Will a job when he's, like, clearly, clearly freaking out. It's a good move. Everyone's coping in a different way. Where'd he get hit? Jesus! Tell me to get him out of there! Oh my... Oh my... They're jumping out of the plane! Stay on the plane! Where's the goddamn DC? Basically, just like a sitting duck, <laughs> hoping nobody shoots you. Flash. Shit. <laughs> I don't think that's the correct reply, Trooper. <laughs> I say flash. You say thunder. You yes, sir. <laughs> flash. Shit. <laughs> That means one of us is in the wrong drop zone, sir. Yeah, or both of us. I have a feeling most drop zones were not correct. Locate some landmarks to get our berries. Bridges, roads, trees. <laughs> we're not lost, Brian. We're in Normandy. <laughs> we're not lost, we just don't know where we are. Oh, that's what that is. That's cool. Any weapon? No, sir. As soon as I hit that prop blast, so long leg back. All I got is this knife and some TNT. Flashlight. Rank Can you take out a button? You got a raincoat? Yeah. What is that? He had a compass in his pants? If someone could explain what that was, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. I don't know what that was. We got a lot of walking ahead of us. Probably a friggin' train or... Flash! Thunder! Thunder. It's it. Are you? They're slowly finding each other. Arnier said you and Hall up front. Who the hell is Hall? I think Arnier is too angry to be up front. I don't know if... That's not to say I don't understand the anger. But I think he's just gonna want to kill the first German CCs. Hey, Garnier. That's enough, Garnier. Next time I say wait for my command, you wait for my command, Sergeant. Yes, sir. 
What's that guy's problem? Gonorrhea. <laughs> really? His name, dummy, Garnier. Gonorrhea, <laughs> get it? None of your fucking business, cowboy. All right, let's move out. Sir. See him? He just sat there. Shout to me for killing Krauts. He just wanted you to wait for his command. Joe, he don't even drink. I don't know, I feel like in this situation that's probably a good thing. <laughs> no? Oh, it's a paratrooper. Anybody need supplies or ammo? Now's the time to get it. McDowell. You okay? Yes, Sergeant. Well, let's go. Does McDowell know him, or is it just that it's their first American soldier he's seen who's dead? I promised my kid brother I'd fetch him back a Luger. So I got first dibs, okay? It's the Navy. The landings have started. Let's go. Let's move it out. You. I just heard his brother. The lock, you shut your yap. His brother got it at a casino. Found out before we jumped. Did Winters know that already, or is that his first time hearing that, too? Where are you from, son? Eugene, Oregon. Eugene? I'm from Astoria. You don't say. Yeah. What gives? What are you doing in a crowd uniform? My family answered the call. Wait, I gotta look into that. I didn't know that was a thing. I need to look into that. Yeah. At this year's hall, Abel Company, known as Cowboy, from Texas, Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you, Dick. Yeah, you too, Buck. What's the situation? Uh, not good. 90% of the men are still on the counter. 90%? You got some cigarettes? Hey, keep the pack. <laughs> yeah, so he's coming. Wow. I gotta run. I'll see you around. Yeah. See you around. Check it out. Danke. Did Spears do that? Is company? So that obviously seemed really harsh and intense, but it makes sense why he did it. There are two guns that we know of firing on Utah Beach. We plan on a third and a fourth here and here. We'll establish a base of fire and move under it hard <laughs> What's and all fast doing there? two squads of three. Boy Garnier. I was like, put okay. me in, coach. We'll be making the main assault. I thought I heard in the background, like as they were panning to the scene, that he said, did you tell command we only have 12 guys? Lieutenant, sir, I was wondering, sir, you need an extra hand? Ain't you sinks Jeep driver? So, Lorraine, sir, you're with me, Lorraine. So, they have 12, now 13 with Lorraine, if I heard that correctly, people against an unknown amount of Germans. Oh, this is too stressful. This is too stressful. Lipton seems like he's a good leader also. Three cannons. Take Ranny, envelop right, give covering fire. Ray, on the machine gun. Oh my god, please don't fall. So that's the row of cannons. That's the fourth cannon. And where's the machine gun in relation to those ones? I wish I knew what the hand symbols meant. I got the grenade part, but... Oh no, oh no, no. no. He's just me out, Buck. Follow me. Always him first. Ooh! In the butt! <laughs> what in the baseball pitch was that? He threw that so hard it exploded on impact. Oh no, no, who is it? Who is it? Ooh. Oh my god, he's a hole. How is he okay? Uh. 
I love how they're filming this to make us feel like we're in the, the thick of it, too. I can't believe I'm fucked up my ass! <laughs> Your ass! Oh. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to fuck up. I don't... He just got shot, and he's apologizing he for getting punch. shot. That's how you know how important this was to him. Who bumped in him like that? Jesus, again! Toy! Oh my god. Listen, bad things happen in threes. He's got to watch out for a third grenade. That's all I'm saying. How does that even happen? Could you imagine if freaking Toy died there too? Buck would never forgive himself. Because it wasn't his fault someone rammed into him and he dropped the grenade because they completely like body checked him, but he would never forgive himself for that. He got his brass knuckles! Where'd he get those? Must be doing something right. Look, God, I'm so confused. They're firing on the third gun. <laughs> oh, shit. Blow this thing before they figure out what the hell's happened. Think one of those dead crabs has a loser. That is not what we're worrying about right now. <laughs> Christ, they must think he's a medic or something. <laughs> Look out, you freaking Luger. Why don't you go get it for you, stupid mick? Can he have done that once the fighting was over? That would have been the dumbest way to frickin' die. Hiya, cowboy! Touch your fucking Jimmy trap, gonorrhea. <laughs> <Don't like that>. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're best friends. And TNT! I got TNT, sir! Good job, Tyler! He wants to impress Winter so badly. It's so sweet. Fire in the hole! Wait, that's really how those work? What do you mean we'll soon find out? <laughs> you only want a yes answer before you're running in there. What was that? Wait, 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 wait. What was that? Go check on Hall. Like all of them, it's gonna be a freaking nightmare for me, guys. Okay, keep your head down. bit with him. Money peak up, he takes a shot at the next gun. All yours. What is he doing? Going out of the trench. Dude's crazy. Sorry. I'm calling Spears crazy, but like in the best way. Like he has no fear. He's just like, just let's get this shit done. I had a little trouble getting through that first field. <laughs> Everyone else maintain your face of fire. Oh, this is so stressful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to battalion. Go, go. I figure there's maybe 40 or so crowds still manning three MG42s to the rear. We killed maybe around 20, so yeah, probably there's 40 left. He made it. Sure. Nice ride you got here, next. Great to meet you, Beach. We should put them to work before they're missed. Ooh, look at all that blood. Most of the 101st Airborne, including Easy Company, was still scattered all over Normandy. We had an hour to rest and scrounge whatever food we could. An hour? How we doing, Malak? We're doing good. If you have a <laughs> reservation ammo? someplace else, I'd be happy to go with it. You guys use what you got. Oh my gosh. Oh, what are they eating? Cat food? I wouldn't have made it this far. But if I did make it this far, I would have just starved to death. There's no way. There's no way. Uh, any word on Lieutenant Mean yet, sir? No, not yet. 
Don't that make you our commanding officer, sir? Yeah, it does. Oh, Sergeant? I'm not a Quaker. <laughs> Oh, my guess, the county's probably a Mennonite. What's a Mennonite? What's a Mennonite? You know that map you found? That had every crowd gun in Normandy on it. Oh, yeah? That's like a huge deal. I lost a man today. He's a good man. Man. Not even old enough to buy a beer. I sent that map up to division. I think it's gonna do some good. I think that's probably an understatement. Also, that's the first guy in his command he's lost. It's going to be, like, particularly painful, I bet. That night, I took time to thank God for seeing me through that day of days. I promised God and myself that I would find a quiet piece of land someplace and spend the rest of my life in peace. I hope he gets to do that. For destroying the German guns at Breakcore Manor, the following medals were awarded. Bronze Stars, Walter Hendricks, Donald Malarkey, John Plesha, Joe Toy, Carwood Lipton, Cleveland Petty, Myron Ranny, Popeye Wynn, Silver Stars, Buck Compton, and Bill Garnier, Gerald Lorraine, Distinguished Service Cross was awarded to Lieutenant Richard Winners. Easy Company's capture of the German battery became a textbook case of an assault on a fixed position and is still demonstrated at the United States Military Academy at West Point today. That was so good. <sighs> okay, I have a million thoughts. I'm trying to organize them before I start speaking, but I apologize that this is kind of all over the place. I just couldn't help but wonder what would have happened if instead of winters, it was Sobel. And I know a lot of things would have had to change, right? Like, the the guys in the first episode would have needed to not say anything about Sobel. Um, I'm assuming Sobel probably would have been on Mian's plane because he would have been Mian's position. So he probably would have died there. But let's pretend none of that happened. Let's pretend instead of Winters, it was Sobel. I just cannot imagine Sobel doing any of these things. And that might not be fair of me because I really only saw one episode of him. And I'm not trying to diminish him at all because he really did he really did a great job of training the men. He did a great job of getting them in physical condition, um, obviously making them bond with each other, not for the best of reasons, but still. He did a great job training the men. But he was not great at the actual logistics and in the field work. Which is why they moved him to work at that school and train those other people. But because his weaknesses are the logistics and in the field type of things, I'm just trying to imagine, pretend Winters isn't there, it's Sobel. He lands, he meets up with Hall. They're lost. Like, Sobel's not getting him out of there. And then let's say they happen to meet up with Lipton's, the group that was with Lipton. I don't even see that happening, but let's pretend they do. He's going to look at that map. He's not going to get them where they need to go. Like, obviously, we laugh about the whole fence incident because that was really freaking funny. But also, like, that's not somebody you want leading you when you're actually on the ground. And I don't even see them getting to, I think they called it, like, HQ or whatever. I don't even see them making it to HQ unless somebody else stepped up and said, no, you're going the wrong way or no, this isn't right. But I don't think Sobel would have listened because he didn't listen in the training exercises ever. So I doubt he would have listened here because it kind of seemed like an ego thing. So I don't even think they're getting to HQ. So they're either dead or they're missing the attack on Breakcore Manor. And then at, like with the whole Breakcore Manor thing, I don't see him leading that and executing that nearly as well as Winters did. And I think partly that's because Winters was in the thick of it. He had no issues actually leading, going out front, leading from the front, 
and he had a good understanding of where to send people and what to do. And with Sobel, when we saw in the training exercises, he was just antsy. He was like, let's just go get him, right? He didn't, he didn't have like a good tactical mind in that way, which is big talk coming from me because I wouldn't either, but <laughs> um, I don't see that going well. I don't see that being successful if Sobel's leading it. And that's just, that's just crazy to me because I know there's like a lot of what ifs in that situation, but it really shows you how one person can make such a huge impact. And obviously there was a lot of people that deserve a lot of credit in that whole situation. It wasn't just Winters. It was Winters and all of the men that were awarded all of those awards and that were also there with him. But with Winters' leadership, I really think a lot of a lot of really important things happened. And I don't think that would have happened if Sobel was in charge. And that is just absolutely mind blowing to me because like Breakor Manor, I'm pretty sure that you guys can correct me if I'm wrong because I I don't know this specifically. I'm just kind of from what I've seen trying to analyze, but they said that the guns, the artillery at Breakor Manor was what was shooting at Utah Beach. So because they destroyed the artillery, the men were able to have an easier landing at Utah Beach. That's huge. That's huge, huge. And that's because of all of the men, but namely Winters rallying the men that he found, getting them back to HQ within the time frame that they needed to be back. He said, we're seven hours away and we have to be there in four hours. He got them there. And he led an amazing, a textbook case of an assault on a fixed position. Like he did such a great job with that. And because of that, so many other lives were saved. And that is just crazy to me. It's amazing how one person or a group of people can make such a huge impact. That just blows my mind. And I know that that's happening in other areas as well. That's so cool. Continuing talking about Winters. In the first episode, I was just like, he needs to be a leader. Like he's just a leader. And we really, really saw that here in a in a bunch of different ways. Uh, in the break core manner, I kind of mentioned already how he led from the front. He's like, on me, follow me. That was his line, follow me. He's always like at the front. And it doesn't seem like he ever asks his men to do something that he wouldn't also be willing to do. And that's huge. He just, he just steps up. And obviously he was the ranking, ranking leader in that situation, but I, I, again, going back to Sobel, and I feel so, I'm sorry I keep comparing him to Sobel, but um, I don't think Sobel would have done the same. I don't think, I don't, I really don't think he would have done the same. I, I feel like he would have just ordered other people to do certain things, and I don't necessarily think he would have led it. But with Winters leading the charge, that inspires people to want to follow you. And we even saw that with Hall, right? Obviously, he was Hall's coach on, on the basketball team in training, but Hall was so, like, captivated and, and, I guess, inspired by Winters that he even wanted to follow him when his company wasn't even supposed to be there. He just wanted to go. And they had to be like, no, you got to go back. You got to go back to your own company. Um, that just shows you, I feel like, a natural leader. How much of a natural leader Winters was. It, the, the thing that really solidified it for me was that last scene well not last scene but close to the end scene where all of the men were in the truck eating that nasty food which oh. anyways um he he popped in there now i'm trying to remember exactly what went down he popped in there him and garnier had kind of had like strained relations that day after Garnier not listening to him with the Germans that they ambushed on the road. Obviously, Garnier was very angry. He was just found out about the death of his brother and he was not processing it well in that situation, which who would? So he didn't listen to Winters and he automatically started shooting. He let the anger get the best of him. And then Winters put him in his place and is like, dude, you got to listen to my commands. Like, you can't just shoot. You have to wait till I tell you to shoot. And Garnier is angry at him and bitching about him to his other squad mates and so that's that's a tense relationship right there and when you are leading a group of people you don't want somebody to have a tense relationship with you because they need to trust you fully 
if you want to be successful, if they want to live, if you want to live, if you want to keep everybody alive, you have to be a really tight unit. And with Garnier that angry at him, they're not. And I don't know if he knew Garnier was in that truck. I'm not sure. But the way that he was able to kind of get Garnier back on his good side, I guess. That's not, not an accurate way to say it, but I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. The simple act of drinking the alcohol. And I know that sounds so ridiculous, but just that bonding moment. They're all passing the bottle around. They're all drinking. Garnier's like, no, he doesn't drink. And Winters takes a sip of the drink. Kind of solidifying that bonding moment between all of them. And then <laughs> as he's leaving, he goes, oh, Garnier, I'm not a Quaker. And I just thought that was a perfect way of calling out Garnier and saying, listen, I hear what you're saying about me. It needs to stop but not in a way that's going to piss him off more in that kind of like, <laughs> like the ribbing way, like the, you know, that they all do with each other. Like the, the, like we saw in Fury where they're all, <laughs> they're all ribbing each other. They're all acting like they're not very nice to each other, but that's just them bonding. That shows that, th that shows that they're, they're brothers, right? He, he gave it to him that even, uh, who said it? I think it was Malarkey and Toy to Hall were like, you just got to give it back to him. You just, you just got to give it back to him. And as soon as Hall gave it back to Garnier, they're bonded, right? Unfortunately for Hall, he didn't live much longer. But in his own way, in a more appropriate way for a leader, he kind of did that to Garnier. Like, hey, listen, I hear what you're saying about me. Stop saying it. I'm not a Quaker. <laughs> and then that, and then he leaves. And that allows the group of men in the truck to bond even more because they have this funny moment. Garnier just got called out, but he wasn't called out in a way that's going to make him get defensive. Just the whole, everything he did there just really shows how much of a natural leader he is because then he leaves. He lets them bond again without him because again, you need, you need that brotherhood. You need them to be a tight knit group if you want them all to survive. And he did such a, he did that so naturally. He did that so naturally. It's just, it's impressive. <laughs> I don't even know if he meant to do that. It's possible I'm reading into it too much. But it really just, I'll have to see in the next episode. Maybe I'm way wrong. But I feel like he's working on building that camaraderie that had already obviously started in training. Got a little tense in their first day, which makes sense. And now he's healing that relationship again and making it stronger. And I just think that was so well done. So well done. Um, I'm trying to think. <laughs> I'm trying to think what else. I kind of just like went off. Went off there. And now I don't know what else I was going to say. Um, oh. I'm blanking on his name now. Hold on. It will come to me. Spears. 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 Is crazy in the best way <laughs> in the best way he does not care he does not care if he dies he's not afraid of anything he, he was just freaking running out of the trenches guns blazing jumping around like what the hell dude's crazy i love it <laughs> i love it um and i also think they didn't actually show it but i think they're alluding to the fact that he was the one who shot all those those germaner Germ germaner german prisoners of war or as I'm going to call them now, Germaners. Um, and that seems so awful. So harsh. Again, the word crazy comes to mind. But if you think about why, it totally makes sense. It totally makes sense. Because they are still trying to round up everybody who dropped. I think... At one point they said, I don't know when it was said either, but I'm pretty sure at one point I heard them say 90% of the people were not there yet. So they have this HQ that they're they're working on gathering everybody at. They have 10% of the soldiers that they were expecting. They, So they're down a lot of numbers. They're down a lot of supplies because a lot of them, when they jumped lost their supplies um 
I obviously Winters lost everything. I think it was, I think it was Lip. They call Lipton Lip, right? I think it was Lip that said his his leg bag was gone as soon as he like jumped out of the plane. So they're missing a lot of supplies, missing people, missing supplies. They're just getting their HQ together, so they don't have like they don't have a spot for them either. They don't have a way to contain them. They don't have a person to guard them because they need all the people they can possibly get because they're down so much and they don't have the supplies to keep them fed or watered it so it just it makes sense as awful as awful as it is because you're like well they were prisoners they didn't have weapons like it's shocking for sure but it makes sense it really does because what's the alternative what are they supposed to do use even more manpower to watch over them like and then along with that, I loved that scene where that one German soldier was an American who went back to Germany to answer the call. I didn't know that that actually happened. I need to look into that. I, I believe that actually happened, but that's, that's crazy to me. And such a cool way of showing, like I've said multiple times, I think I've said it in multiple war movies that we've watched here on the channel. Like they're, they're just, they're just guys like, like, like our guys were. They're just people like our people were. And if the situation was different, they potentially could have been friends. They probably have common interests in a lot of things. And they're soldiers following orders, and his case is obviously much more extreme because he left the U.S. to go fight in Germany, or, well, for the Germans. But if the war wasn't happening, it, they really showed how they're just another group of guys, and they could have potentially all been friends with each other. And that's just crazy. And I'm so glad they showed that because it's so easy to look at the enemy and be like, the enemy's evil. Because, you know, in a lot of ways... Like, they, they are to, you know, our side of the story and to, in this case, like, everybody's side of the story. But the actual soldiers on the ground fighting are just ordinary people following orders. And I, I love how all of these movies that I've watched and now this show are really kind of diving into the complexities of that. It's really cool. I think that's everything now. Uh, I'm sure I'll think of things when I'm done, because I always do. But <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the reaction. If you did, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you subscribe, definitely make sure you hit the bell button, because that will notify you when I post future reactions. Also, if you would like the full reactions to all of these episodes and all of the movies, you can find them over on Patreon. I will link that in the description and a pinned comment below the video. Um, but I appreciate all of you, no matter how you can support watching, commenting, subscribing, whatever you feel like doing. I really appreciate it. And thank you again to the wonderful Band of Brothers community for welcoming me in and being so kind and leaving such amazing comments. You guys are, are really great. Um, and I appreciate it. And I hope you have an amazing day. <laughs>